Oprah, what does having this legacy mean to you? Oh, Sherry, that's such a beautiful question. The word legacy, I just want to leave you all with this, is that when I came back from opening my school in South Africa and I said to Maya, Maya, <laughs> <laughs> I said, the school's going to be my greatest legacy. Those girls are going to be, those girls are everything. And she said, you have no idea. <laughs> You have no idea what your legacy is going to be. Because, she said, your legacy is never one thing. Mm. It's every life you touch. Yeah. And I pass that on to you because what Maya said to me that day in her kitchen, she said, it's every audience member who ever came yeah. from wherever they came from. Yes. And they sat in that audience and they had an experience. And they went home and they decided, I'm going to do better. I'm going to get a better job. I'm going to leave my raggedy husband. I'm going to do whatever <laughs> I need to do. Yes. It's every life you touch, so it's not one thing. So for me to be able to see you, to sit in the seat of your life on your own show with your name on it, it is, it is, it is the passing on. Thank you so much. It is much. the passing on. So you're officially passing the baton I'm on I'm passing the baton. <laughs> We'll be right back. Now, y'all, the holidays are coming up. Did I get my invitation to the holiday party? I'm not... You get it. Jamie, every, huh? You get a uh, you get an invitation every year. Every year you don't show up, but but <laughs> but you know what? I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something. I like to get a jump on the holidays, and I had a feeling that I was not gonna get to see you. No, it's gonna, I'm coming. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. Well, you know what? Just in case she's lying. I, I shopped early for you. Oh, oh my, and I ain't even got your birthday gift yet. And I you, know. Oh my gosh, what, why, what'd you get? Merry Christmas. <laughs> what is this? Oh my God, oh. <laughs> Girl, you better know it. You better and know it. that way, and let me tell you my reason for this. Right. Right, so you can get off my spouse and, and you can have this. <laughs> Oh my God, this is the best Christmas present ever. You know me so well. There's more Sherry, BRB. You know what I love is you are just having a great year because you also wrote a, a bestseller. You wrote a self-help mm -hmm. biography. Yes. Okay, you got, your, you got your Netflix special. Like, have you splurged on anything? Yeah, I, I splurged more than child support, because child support is the biggest thing. <laughs> They're that, called splurging, because that's every month. OK, you splurge on child support? How much is your child support? Oh, my goodness. Can I ask you that? Yeah, my child support, I, my family, my, just my family cost me uh, about 200 a month. That's $200? 200000 200000 It don't have to cost me that much. It just child support come with baby mama support. Everybody come behind the children with their hands out. Yeah. So I, oh my goodness! I splurged on some, I splurged some things, cars and all that. I just got a million dollars worth of cars, but it ain't nothing like that child support with people with feet walk up on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a million dollars worth of cars. You ever let people borrow your cars, or you just drive them on? My baby mama had my car while I was gone. Really? She got. She went to my house. She got the keys. My my daughter trying to take that car from me. She <laughs> she told me, my mama want it bad. Like so, she, man. Everybody drive the car except for the pink one. They don't drive the pink one. Oh my gosh, yeah. that is like uh, absolutely amazing. Yeah. I'm... It's so funny because you are so and and you work hard for it. You have a lot of money because you are very very <laughs> sure, successful. Sure, sure. Hey 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 hey. <laughs> yeah, we on TV. Child support. Listen, are you the child support lady? <laughs> Why you, why you, why you Look, let me that? tell you something. Cause are, are you single right now? Yes, I'm single. I'm single. Okay, I'm definitely single. Yeah. You the type. Look, I'm the type of woman you want to get with. Cause yeah. I ain't got no uterus. I, I thought, you want to get with me? Yeah. I'm not gonna have no baby. Yeah. And I'm the one. And, and guess what? <laughs> I, I don't care if you got a history read to me. I still have a baby. I don't Amen. care. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, I, I create eggs. So <laughs> I make some. I make some more. I'm telling you. You know what? I, I, man, I. Man, man, you do make a good couple, though. I thought about that. We, we already successful. We already. See, this is a date. What date you gonna get better than this right here? I don't know because I got my own stuff. Cause I could buy you three or four more cars. You could buy me three or four more cars. You get me three or four more cars. Like I'm at your level. I'm at your level. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my God. Sherry, the don't. Same be... level. Yeah. Sherry will be right back. guest because no matter what life throws at her, she keeps it real with poise and grace. And I cannot wait for her new game show, Raid the Cage, to premiere tonight. Please welcome back my friend, Jeannie Mai. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You better come out here with a vengeance looking all good. <laughs> Let me tell hey, you this girl. We got to always take care of us, you, though, right? You that have to. You, oh, your microphone fell away. Yeah, I think oh, thank you. I you hugged it out of her. I'm too hot for it to handle. You do. You, you know, it's just like you, you, you got to take a moment to just take care of yourself. Yeah. And breathe and do it. And you are doing it so well, thank Mama. Thank you. Thank you. You look good. Thank you. You know, you you know, I, I just love you. I like to consider you a friend. You're one of my favorite guests, Jeannie, whenever oh, you come. I love coming. It's so home here. I I, and I hope so. And I know um because I'm I'm one that has been through it and and yes. we are praying for you, but you're going through this divorce. How you doing, mama? You know, I'm not gonna lie, you know, it takes every day to to just really sit and just be quiet in your thoughts, take care of me. Um, but one thing I know is you give God your pain, he will give you his power. Girl. Period. So every day, I'm like, here you go. You got room for more? Here's some more. Here you go. And just taking it day by day, you know? I know mine was, I was like, being on my knees, I'd be like, just give me enough light for this, where I'm at and show me what my assignment is today. I couldn't yes. worry about nothing else. Yes. You just got to put on the blinders, girl. Absolutely. And turning off everything helps, too. Yes. You know, um, after that moment, I just turned off every single device in my house, and I really tuned into the voices I really needed to hear, which was me and the truth. That's it. Yeah. That's it. You know, um, I know when, when I went through it, Jeannie, and and because I, I had married my best friend, Jeffrey's yes. father, and uh, it was it was devastating to me. And but the thing that held me so much was Jeffrey. Yes. And watching Jeffrey come through the door every day. So you know you have uh, Monaco. Oh. How are you handling this being a mom, oh Monaco? My gosh. This baby oh, right no. here, this blessing right here. You know, Monaco, that is my north star. Yeah. And I can definitely tell you that I don't know if I would handle this the same way without her because today I'm able to look at her and I can say, what would I advise you if you were in my shoes? Yes. And it changes everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm so thankful to be a mom and I'm thankful to have her. You know, it's something like you, you go through stuff and it's just like you look at your child and you go, thank you for this gift because I needed this gift right now. Absolutely. Right now. He knew that, didn't he? He knew that. Yeah. And I, and I got to tell you, Monaco gives me, because I follow Monaco, <laughs> Monaco gives me such joy and I love watching her on Instagram. Yeah. And I tell you, there was one on Instagram where you were coming back from a trip, you were at the <laughs> airport and she met you at the airport. Did she just melt your heart? How did you <gasps> feel? Look at that. How did you feel watching her? Oh my God, you're gonna start me here. Um, you know, she, Monica's funny, cause she, she's definitely a mood. And on her best days, she's a schmood. Like she just, <laughs> she really isn't about the kisses and hugs. She's really yeah. like, mommy, mommy, not now. She's usually like that. But every so often, she looks at me and she's like, where you been? I've been missing you. Yes. And we have this dance, look at us. We, uh, we, you can already picture it if yes. we're at the club 20 years from now, I don't know. But like, that is my, my everything. And we, we have that vibe and we see each other and, and she knows I got her. Yes, You know, absolutely. And I love it every time I see you and Monica kiss. Like, y'all yeah. just kiss, and it is just like... And it's not just one. Mm -hmm. I want all of them. We're counting in Vietnamese, we're counting in Spanish, we're <laughs> counting in English. I want all of the love. <laughs> okay, then that's what trips me out, because Monaco speaks English, yeah. and she speaks Vietnamese. Yes. Okay, so, like, do, does she ever get the two confused? You know, the only time she gets confused is when she's making animal noises. Really? Because I didn't realize, but every... Like, just say, for example, a dog. Okay. We in Vietnamese say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, not woof. Not woof, which is in American. <laughs> and like in Portuguese, my friend who asked her, she was like, what does a dog say? She said, whoa, whoa. And my friend said, no, no, it's go, go. And we were like, where are you from? <laughs> what dog is that? Okay. And so every, I think the, the best thing about her is that 
when she meets people, she gets to teach them a little bit of Vietnamese yeah. from what she learns, and then she picks up English from everybody around her. And so to, to be a proud black and Vietnamese woman in America, that's all I need from that little girl. Oh, man. Yeah. There's more Sherry, BRB. Your birthday is this weekend, so I'm not Yay! forgetting about your birthday. Yay! October 7th, yeah. October 7th, it is coming, and I don't know if you have any special plans for your birthday. Well, I'll be on stage on my birthday. Oh, you're gonna be on stage. See, that's a good thing, you're working on your birthday. Yes, thank okay. you, God. So, well, <laughs> so then Boris can't be with you because he, he, then you're gonna be on stage, but we got Boris to do a little something, something for you for your birthday, so take a look. Look over my shoulder right here. I was about to FaceTime you, but they told me this is gonna air on Sherry in front of millions of people, so I can't take my shirt off. Look, you are a superhero mother, a sexy, awesome wife, a courageous artist who always looks for growth in the journey but never rushes to get there. I am so lucky to be next to you for the 23rd year as we're celebrating your birthday. You are funny. You are fine as funnel cake. And I love you. Happy Ooh. birthday. you out there chair and sit right there so you can be talking to me. Sherry will be right back. This memoir was so funny. It was funny, it was poignant, it was tender. I loved it so much. But like I said, we put red over the why the title of Leslie Effing Jones? It's cause like it's like I've been doing this so, so long. Yes. And when anybody sees me or anybody meets me, they can be like, oh man, Leslie Effin Jones. Like it's always <laughs> that. So, so that's that's, you know, I was like, what other title could it be? Oh. Cause you know I didn't used to use my last name. Really? I used to just go by Leslie. I just for years went by Leslie and was trying to be like Madonna, you know? Okay, so, okay. You know, oh, Whoopi Goldberg, and a booker was like, yo, I'm not putting just Leslie on the on the, the thing. You got, what is your last name? And I was like, I don't want you. He was like, what is your last name? And I was like, I want to be like Madonna. He was like, and I was like, oh, Whoopi. And he was like, Whoopi's last name is Goldberg. <laughs> and he was like, Madonna, bitch, please. <laughs> He was like, what is your last name? And I was like, Jones. He was like, Leslie Jones? Oh, that's a famous name. And I've been using it ever and since. And you've been using it ever since. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna have a good time. Don't be so legendary. Sherry's got you feeling good. There's more Sherry, BRB. You had a big dinner party. Look, everything you does will make the internet. And even your big dinner party that you had, I looked at it and I saw the people that were there. You had Nene Leakes, Larsa Pippen, Jenny Garth, Tiffany Thiessen. Like, that party looked like a lot of fun. It was like was a it? social media potpourri. Yeah. It was just a hodgepodge. Um, and there was a lot of tea bubbling. You had Melissa Rivers, you had um, Denise Richards. They were there early, and I remember that was some great gossip. And then I didn't realize that Jenny, Garth, and Tiffany, who I know separately, I didn't know that they, they used didn't... to be best friends. Yeah. And they had a falling out. So we were just all at the same dinner, and it was nice because they spoke to each other. So I didn't. That made news, right? I here. know. I didn't know that I was doing this like reunion because I was inviting individual people that I thought were interesting that I've met as a result of Just Be My uh, Podcast. And it was a great night because there was a lot of fun gossip, but it really was a safe space. Like you just knew nothing was going to get out. Some stuff did yeah. happen, and it didn't get out. And it didn't get out because y'all wasn't posting everything. It didn't get it's out. Not a good time. And you know um, who I was so surprised to see was Raquel, who was on Vanderpump Rules. Like I have not seen her since her whole scandal. All the artist went down. formerly known as Raquel. Yes. She's now Rachel. Yes. She's Rachel now. Huh? Yes. Well, she came on the podcast, which was a very sort of disruptive interview. I did not expect that at all because I didn't know that much about her. And I think she's having sort of this renaissance and I think she's always felt like she uh, is the runt of the litter and at this dinner she felt like she was sort of amongst the women and she really enjoyed it and she stayed to the very end which showed she was having a great time. Again, I didn't know that that was her first time out yeah. since going away for a couple of months. So it was a nice night of surprises and it was very mature, like no one was, you know, dancing on tables or hanging from chandeliers. It was very you know, like- You know, girl, you had a party for grown women. Like, you, I you did, know. yes, it was very like adult, yeah. you know? We, we, we had good conversation, good business advice, good gossip. 
and everybody was, you know, moms that went home probably by a light. And went to sleep. Like, exactly. yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, it wasn't all that. That's what I liked about it. Sherry will be right back. Did you grow up wanting to be in a sitcom? Oh, you know what? I want to do a sitcom, and you got to tell me about that. Oh, my goodness. Because I think, I think it's like, uh, it, it's so family-oriented, so wholesome. Yes. And I grew up watching all the old sitcoms, you know. And... I like Mary Tyler Moore. That's yes. What did, you, did you like Mary Tyler Moore? Ah! <laughs> I watched that when that was the newsroom, you see? Yes. Oh, man, I, it, it made me think about the world out there, you know, just yes. going to New York and before I moved here, obviously. And then I used to watch um, I Love Lucy, watch the Cosbys. Oh, Felicia Rashad. Felicia Rashad. Felicia Rashad. That Felicia. was the mother of all mothers. Yeah, I had a crush on Felicia Rashad. Yes. Definitely. So if you were to meet Felicia Rashad right now, what would you do? I had a crush on her since I was a boy, and those never go. <laughs> You, they, they never leave you. It feels like you're a little boy. Every time I see her, I'm like, I don't even want to go over there. <laughs> you know that feeling where yes, it's just, I do. Yes. It's, it sticks with you. But no, I, I want to do a sitcom. I think it would be amazing. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time. It'll be so legendary. Sherry's got you feeling good. There's more Sherry. BRB. You are so full of surprises when I'm reading about you. I did not know that you almost became an exotic dancer. Yeah. What? You have to tell me about this. Okay, so I, I was in graduate school, and you, you're not paid very much, and I right. wanted more money, and so I was a performing member of a dance company. Okay. okay? So I've, I've been three... Oh! Oh! <laughs> okay. That was 50 pounds ago, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, yeah, that was uh, one of the dance companies is a yes. uh, international Latin ballroom okay. was one of the styles. But anyhow, so one of my fellow dancers said, Neil, you need some extra money. We, we shake our stuff down at this club <laughs> and, and women put the money in the thing. Right. So I said, oh, let me check that out. Okay. So I went down there just to observe. And <laughs> so, the, so there's a, and I'm like, okay, there's a lot of money going in there. And they came out for one of them. They had on jock straps right. that were asbestos lined, and there was lighter fluid on it. They ignited it, and they came out dancing to Jerry Lee Lewis's Great Balls of Fire. And <laughs> in, I'm, I'm embarrassed that it, it was not until that moment where I said, I think I'll be a math tutor instead. <laughs> Why didn't that occur to me? <laughs> you know, I could tutor some math. I got the math. Oh so I so I had to see. I'm, I'm embarrassed. I, I kind of the visual of you walking around in like a little G jock strap just kind of turns me on a little <laughs> bit. <I> just... <laughs> now wait a minute, as a dancer, like you had to do splits and things like that. Oh yeah, you... I was flex. I was so uh, nothing like dancer shape okay. because you're strong, you're flexible, and graceful. Oh so my god. So could you do like were you doing splits and things? Oh uh, yeah, I could do bo uh, the scissors bo both splits at the in my day. Okay. In my day. In your day. In my day. Could today be a day that you could possibly... <laughs> do you think you could, you could possibly do a... I'm an old man. All right, all right, all right let me see what you I got think? here. Okay, oh my hold gosh. on. Hold on. No, no, I can't. No, no, hold on. Okay, hold on. take these out. Let me take those out. All right. No, no, okay, let me just see. I'm gonna move out the way. Let me see. So, okay. We'll be right back. My baby Evan, your son Evan, he, okay, he was with his girlfriend. He's 21. He had a girlfriend, they, and then he broke up. They had, a, they had a bad breakup, and it was so sad because, you know, when you see your child go through something, you want to... You want to just break a lot of things. Yes. So he poured all of his little broken heart into a love song he wrote for his his crush when he was younger. Yes. Which was Selena Gomez. So he's like, you know what? I've always respected and loved Selena Gomez. I'm gonna write 
just a, a really sweet song to her. And I was like, I didn't know he could write. And, and he, then he turned it into a song, and then he turned it into a music video. So Donnie helped him with the song, and his dad, John, his, directed it? Yes, John's, his dad's a director, and yeah. his stepdad is, of course, Donnie Wahlberg, who helped him with the melody and everything, but he wrote those words to Selena Gomez, and the song's called um, uh, It Doesn't Matter. Yeah. But he sings about Selena in it, and it's so incredibly sweet. Okay, so what did Selena say when she saw it? Well, he, he had this come out in January and we haven't heard a thing. You haven't heard from Selena? And let me just tell you guys, every day he wakes up and he checks his DMs waiting to see, like, I love the video and my heart breaks because every day he's like, she, will she someday, show, someday she'll send me a message saying okay, it's great. Okay, then we, first of all, you, okay, you as mama, you on Mass Singer, you supposed to be trying, putting out the bells for Selena Gomez. <laughs> I've been trying. Okay, so we got, can, can we make a plea to Selena Gomez? I can we do? Selena! You know you can hear us right now, girl. <laughs> now, my baby Evan, Jenny's son Evan, has made a video for you, Selena. Come on. Right? Can you do it for the McCarthy Wahlbergs? <laughs> and and re respond to this video. Please. Please, Selena. Please, what we gotta do, Selena? Baby, 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 please. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, that is so nice of you because he does ask me every day and will ask me every day for the rest of our lives, so I appreciate it. Selena, that. please help us out. Please. There's more Sherry, BRB. Last night was the Women Tell All episode. This is like, this was after the cliffhanger, you sent Faith home, and then you reunited for the first time. How emotional was that? Um, it was incredible. I, I know that both Faith and I felt like our parting at the mansion represented no closing for either yeah. of us. And so the weeks that went by between that moment and the moment I got to see her again on stage last night were agonizing. Yeah. And I was so thrilled to see her. I was just, I mean, she's just a genuine good heart. She's warm, loving. Um, I mean, in the hug, we still told each other we loved each other. Oh, my and God. And that's just the way it is. This is like why we're watching you every week on the edge of our seats glued, because you're so, your heart is so big and so wonderful, Gary. It's like, and then I, when I watch the show, oh, this is what I want to ask you, because it was unprecedented drama on the show. I've never seen anything like it with this. It was a debate over whether Edith's guacamole or Susan's meatballs call Susan's gas on the show, okay? I've never seen anything like this on the show at all. You, you had time to think about this. Who, what caused that gas? I did. I have a theory. Who, who caused it? I think it's the excessive wine being drunk by everyone in there that caused rampant gas. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it was anybody's food. It was so funny because when she said to you, I got something to tell you. I got gas. You like, you were cracking up. So is, were, were you shocked? How did you feel? Just a little bit. Caught me <laughs> off guard. You know, I tried to be prepared for everything and I certainly wasn't for that. <laughs> that's not something you get, you generally talk yeah, about. Yeah, usually people don't just say, they, yeah. just, they got gas. You're right. It was so funny. It just, oh my gosh. And now it's like, it's coming to a close. It's coming to a close. We don't know who's going, who you're gonna pick because next week, is overnight dates. Okay, now are you nervous for the world to see you in the fantasy suites? Because we know what happens in the fantasy suites. No, you don't. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right, Gary. Um, <clears throat> so, you, you know, when you're in your 30s and you're looking at the fantasy suites, I think you're thinking about a particular event that right. might happen. And with us at our age, we were looking for those moments off camera, no microphone, where we could get into the harder questions that we hadn't been able to talk about. Mm. All of us on the show, nearly all of us, had children and grandchildren that we had to be a little guarded about right. when the cameras were on. In the fantasy suites, no. We could have any kind of conversation we wanted. And it, there were watershed moments in that fantasy suite. I mean, oh. I made decisions in there. Really? Yeah. Get, get, about older men. When I tell you, when I tell you, everybody want to be the Energizer Bunny. That's what I'm talking about. This is like slow and steady, get to know you conversation. Yeah. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna have a good time.